Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at a topic called the business cycles. This topic is important if you are studying investments because to select securities for your portfolio, you need to understand the business cycles. Before I start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my YouTube where I have a little bit close to 2000 plus accounting, auditing, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. And on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well other courses. So what is the business cycle? Well, think of the economy like the season during the year. We have four seasons. We have the winter season, spring, summer, fall, then we go back to the winter season. So we go through uh, repeatedly experiencing periods of expansion and contraction. Now, it doesn't work exactly like the seasons where it's three months for each, but the point is we go through ups and downs through the economy. The length can be very, and the depth, how long and how severe, whether it's the expansion or the, re, or the contraction, can be irregular. It's not, it's not the same. So these reoccurring cycles or reoccurring pattern of recession and recovery, this is what we call the business cycles. Now, we have a transition points with, with those business cycles. They are called peaks. Well, simply put, this is a peak, like at the top. And we have trough, which is something at the bottom. We have peaks and trough. A peak is the transition from the end of an expansion to start of a contraction. So you peak here, you reach the max, then you start to go down, then you go all the way down at the bottom, and this is the trough occurs at the bottom of a recession just as the economy enters a recovery. Now, if you can, if you can predict, think about it, if you can predict those business cycles, what should you do at the at the peak? You should be selling. You should sell securities. And what should you do at the trough? You should buy. You should buy. Generally speaking, the average investor, I'm talking about the average investor, what happened is at the peak they buy because everybody's doing great and uh, they think it's going to go forever. And at the trough, they get scared and they sell. So professional or people that know what they're doing, you will do the exactly the opposite. Now, when we go through the business cycles, not all companies are the same. Certain companies do better than other companies. And we have to differentiate between different industries. And we're going to talk about the industries in the next section. But simply put, we can break the industries into two types, cyclical and industries. So as the economy goes goes through different stages of the business cycle, the relative profitability of different industry group might be expected to vary. Not all companies do the same in, a, in, a, uh, in an expansion and the same in a contraction. They're not all the same. For example, at the bottom, one would expect that cyclical industries, those with above average sensitivity, would tend to outperform other industries. At the bottom, once we are starting to recover, at the trough, once we are starting to recover, those companies, they will start to do better. They will start to perform better because we hit the bottom. Now we are starting to recover. Examples are producers of durable goods, automobiles, bulldozers, trucks, large household items. Once we hit the bottom and the economy is recovering, these companies, they will start to do well. Why? Because they, when, when the economy, when the, remember, we have the peak and we went down. During this period, when we were going down, people deferred those purchases people and companies. So they, they deferred those purchases during the recession. And now we reach the bottom and we're starting to go up. Then once we know, once we know, and we're going to talk about the leading indicators, once the economist or the expert or the professional knows that now we're turning around, we're turning to go up, these companies will start to do better because all these people that defer their purchase, they're doing it now. Other cyclical industries will be producers of capital goods, big, big ticket items. This is what we're talking about here. And um, goods that are produced, that, that, are, that are used to produce another product. Like if you supply the auto industry, if you supply them with tires, then you will start to do well as, as well. So when the demand is slack, few companies will be expanding and purchasing capital goods. So when we are going down, this is when the demand is slack and we'll stop. When do we start? We start when we're going up again. Therefore, if you can time the market, that's really good. Therefore, the capital good industries bears the brunt of a slowdown, but does well in an expansion. So if we're going down, they don't do well. But as soon as we start to go up, 
they will start to do well as well until we reach the bottom and I'm sorry and reached we read another peak then it will go down then they will suffer again usually those companies they will have you know like caterpillar any big item companies construction companies they have a beta greater than one high stock high beta stock this is high beta stock so a beta greater than one because they they go up higher than the market and all on, on the way down they do worse than the market as well so in contrast to cycli cyclical industries we have defensive defensive industries so defensive 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 industries they are a little bit little bit less sensitive to the business cycle so they're not affected by the business cycle as much as the cyclical industries think about your household in, in other words think about your utility bill okay your utility bill, it's going to be almost the same whether we are going through a recession or whether we are going through an expansion. Okay, you might spend a little bit more or less, few dollars more or few dollars less, but it doesn't make that much of a difference. They are like, for example, utilities companies, they'll basically make the same income regardless whether the economy is going through a recession or an expansion. These, uh, these are industries that produce goods for which sales and profit are least sensitive to the state of the economy. What are some examples? Think of food producers, and not all food producers. For example, staple goods. If, if you're buying spaghetti or ketchup, it doesn't matter whether we are going through an expansion or a recession. Actually, if we're going through a recession, these companies will even do better. Pharmaceutical firms, again, you need to buy your, your, your prescription, whether we're going through a recession or an, an, an expansion. Uh, public utilities, again, we talked about the you know your 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 phone bill your electric bill these industries actually will out outperform others because in a recession the other companies they suffer therefore the professionals they sell those cyclicals and they go into defensive companies some specific companies will be the dollar store walmart it doesn't matter walmart actually does better in a recession heinz ketchup mcdonald's think of consumer staples companies that do well regardless of the economy okay Think of these companies beta closer to these betas would be closer to one closer to the uh, closer to the market now because we have we, the economy reaches a peak and a trough now it's important if you can predict those peaks and troughs so what do we look at we look at what's called economic indicator because we go through business cycle it's not surprising that we'll try to predict those business cycles how do how do we predict those business cycle the conference board publishes a set of cyclical indicators to help forecast measure and interpret short-term fluctuation in the economic activities basically we have three types of indicators we have leading indicators in my opinion those are the most important are those economic series that tend to rise or fall in advance because that's what you want to know you want to know in advance it's sometimes it's too late if we're looking at the lagging indicator if you could look at those leading indicator and try to predict what's going on that's the best way to do it again this is not a science this is an art also we have a coincident and lagging indicator as their name suggests they move in tandem or after the economy went through the cycle and let's take a look at some of those indicators just to get an idea what are we talking about here again i said leading are the most important uh, one thing is the average weekly hours of production workers for example if we're looking at the manufacturing cycle uh, the manufacturing industry and especially if our economy is more is manufacturing so if we can if we can find out not if we can find out if the average weekly workers is going up it means companies are working their employees maybe they're working them overtime maybe they're working them longer hours what does that mean why do you work your employees because you are producing why do you produce because you have orders so if the week why do you have orders eventually you're gonna ship them so that's why it's it's a good indi indicator initial claims for unemployment insurance that's very important it comes out on thursday 8 30 every week that's important if more people are being laid off then this is what's going on been what's going on lately is because of the coronavirus this is a leading indicator that if less people are working you have less consumer power you have less consumer power they're going to buy less less goods and services especially from cyclical companies they would still go to walmart they're not but they're not going to buy that new car from gm or ford right so this is going to tell us something about the economy manufacturing new orders notice it's orders it doesn't have to be sales as long as you have the order the sale will follow so the order comes before so we don't have to wait until we make the sale 
orders are good enough for us to be a good indicator. Institute of Supply Management Index of New Order. And I believe this one, if it's uh, uh, there's there's a line 50 above 50 or below 50, above 50 is good, below 50 is not good. New orders of non-defense capital goods. Again, look, look what we're looking at. Only the new orders, the new orders. New private housing unit authorized by local permits. Basically, permits are like orders because before you buy a house, I'm sorry, not before you construct the house, not buy, before you construct the house, you need a permit. And it may take a month or two to start the actual construction. If you see construction companies are getting more permits, this is a good sign for the economy because when you buy a house, the, the new homeowner will have to buy all sorts of items like furniture, TVs, electronics, kitchen supplies, so on and so forth. So that's a good, that's a good, these are good leading indicators. These are coincident indicator or coincident indicator. Basically they happen, they tell you what's going on right now. And these are lagging indicators. They come after the fact, like for example, average duration of unemployment. Now we know after six weeks or eight weeks, the duration is such and such. That's after the fact. Ratio of manufacturing and, and the trade and the trade inventories to sales. So basically, what we're looking at is how are we doing in terms of inventory and sales? Is our inventory turning over? If it's not, it's not good. But but when do we know this? It's we have the sales and we have the inventory after the fact. So those are lagging. They happen at the at the end of the after the cycle happened. They kind of confirm what happens. Now, how good are lagging and leading indicators? Let's take a look at this picture, and basically. This area here is a recession. This area here in blue is a recession. So you know, so we know what we're looking at. This is the year and this is the month. So let's take a look at this leading indicator that's in blue, that's in blue. We see that the leading indicator, it peaked right here. I still remember, maybe some of you would, re uh, would remember this. It peaked 2000 and March, 2001. So this is March, 2001 peak, then it went down, 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 down. It reached the trough in uh, 2001 in November. Then it started to go up. So notice we went through it when we, this is going down. This is the contraction. Okay. So it, notice it's a leading indicator. Then it went up, and again it reached a peak uh, 2000, December 2007. Then it started to go down. At some point here, we enter a recession. Then it went all the way down. It went till 2009, uh, June 2009. Then it went up and it went up like, like this. Okay, so notice here that the leading indicator, they do happen before a recession. So, but can you predict? Look, this is, this is the amount of time before the recession, and this is the amount of time before the recession. I mean, are you going to say it's equal? You might say it's equal, but again, it's very much irregular. The other thing I want you to notice is, notice what happened once we hit bottom, we like, kind of, it's a V, this called, they call it a V recovery. So when we hit bottom, it goes up very fast. Why? Because the government, the fiscal policies and the monetary policies that we talked about in the prior session, they will intervene here and the economy will start again. Now, this is called the V recession. There is the V, there is the U, where it's taken too long. Now, that's, that, that's the big discussion when we had the coronavirus. Are we going to have a V recovery or a U recovery or a W recovery or an L recovery where we'll just go flat or a square root recovery? Or what they're talking about now before the election, this is the big thing now, is K recovery. And this is interesting. It means some people are experiencing more wealth these days than other people. If, if you want my opinion, we're going through a K recovery. And it's, that's my opinion based on my on what I see, based on common sense. Um, more, more people are benefiting from this economy, what's going on now than others. I mean, give you a simple example, Amazon. Amazon is just killing all the other businesses. Amazon, all the other local businesses, medium-sized businesses, that's it. People are buying online, so Amazon will be benefiting here. All the other businesses, like commercial property, all these smalls or those commercial properties, they're going down here, okay? For example, I'm in the online business education. Like, luckily, I'm doing good because more people are going online to learn well, that's good for my YouTube. That's good for my business. 
But if you have a physical school or if you have a traditional education, then you're not benefiting. So yes, I believe in my opinion, we're going through a key recovery and this is going to change a lot in our economy and our and our policies down the road. That's what I predict anyhow. But uh, I believe it's a we're going through as a key recovery. That's my personal opinion. The most important indicator in my opinion is the stock market. The stock market is the most important indicator. Uh, the stock market uh, the stock market price index is a leading indicator. Simply put, what we assume, we always assume that the stock market leads six to 12 months, almost to a year, depending on how believe, how efficient is the market. I believe at least the stock market tells you what's going on six months ahead. So if the stocks are going up now, it means we're going, we're going to be doing good for the next six months, economically speaking, because the stock market, uh, based on the efficient market hypothesis, they can predict the future six months ahead. Okay. That is what would be expected as stock prices are forward looking predictor for future profitability. And I do believe in that. I'm, I'm a strong believer in the stock market. Now, unless there is something unusual, like for example, uh, let's assume the president caught the coronavirus. That's God forbid, you know, the worst thing happened for the president. Well, you know, then it's, it's different. Or when he got the coronavirus itself, those are not usual time. But in normal time, the stock market is a, is the major is a major leading indicator okay so simply put because the stock market is a major leading indicator this makes the series of leading indicator much less useful for investment policy but you want to use them as much as the as possible by the time the series predict an upturn the market has already made its move so the stock market even are before they react before uh, six six or twelve months before what's actually going to happen i believe in that in the next session, we would look at the industry analysis. As always, I'm going to remind you if you like my, if you like the session, please like it and share it. And check out my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources for this course as well as other courses, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam. Good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.